Well, happy Labor Day, Grit Nation. Welcome to Monday. <laughs> I don't know how many of y'all we working today. Some of you might have it off. I know Miss Coach has today off. I doubt. I think a couple of my kids do. I doubt all of them do. I do not. I do not. That's all right. Had a good weekend. Um, yesterday was Miss Coach and I's seventh year wedding anniversary. Uh, been together for eight years. And so, I had a good opportunity. We uh, went away for a day and a half. I had to work on Saturday, but we got to go spend some time away Saturday night. And then I uh, got to go experience Meow Wolf. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Uh, there's a couple of few different Meow Wolf art, interactive art exhibits throughout the United States, mostly over here. I think one's in Colorado, one's in Vegas, and I think one is in New Mexico. I know there's planning on getting more, but I think that's all there is for now. But we got to experience that. That was interesting. It was fun. And let's see. Got to go to a couple. Went to a nice restaurant. Got to take her to there. So, yeah, that was the weekend. Hope you guys had a good one yourself. But today is Monday. And that means we are starting week two of the basic training workshop. First week, we talked about the mindset. We talked about the patterns, mind thoughts, changing into the way that you think. Sorry. Just trying to figure out. I had two cars, one on each side of me, and they were both acting real erratic. So I was just kind of paying attention to what was going on, trying to figure out. But last week, we talked about the mindset. Talked about how our thought patterns turn into our mindset, which then turns into action. And I will be honest with you, I could do a whole workshop on nothing but the mind. The mind is, it's a powerful thing to waste. <laughs> the mind is literally the computer. It is the hub of everything that we do. It can be our best friend. It can be our greatest ally as well as it can be our greatest enemy, our biggest trip up. It is all on how we either allow it to control us or we control it. And we can become pieces and parts. There are times where pieces and parts of our thoughts can actually create a better version of us or enslave us for the rest of our lives or until we say enough is enough. Um, this week we're still going to be talking a little bit about it, but we're going to be talking more about our body. Mind, body, soul. Motivate the mind, build the body, search the soul. Now this week is when a lot of people start, many times when we start this week in a workshop, people will start tuning out. And the reason that they start tuning out is because of what I just said. They start tuning out because of their mind. They automatically assume. They automatically think there's nothing they can do about changing where they are at with their health when it comes to their body. They also start thinking about, they automatically think, good morning, Yvette, they automatically think they know what I'm going to talk about. Well, coach, you get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and you go to the gym. I'm not going to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and go to the gym. Well, you assume that's what I'm going to tell you, right? And then others just, they just don't have an interest. Let me get some cup, let me get a drink of my coffee real quick. Then others who do these workshops and we do the body portion of the body week, they just, they're just like, okay, I got, I'll catch up next week. The point of it is, is if you do not understand the logistics and the, the focus on motivating the mind, building the body, searching the soul, you take one of those out, you're sitting on a two-legged stool. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. 
when I began, when I began to really take a look at my life and what it is, first of all, taking a look back over all the things that I have accomplished in my life, all the jobs, all the career fields that I've chosen, they've taken a toll on my body. In fact, they've probably taken more of a toll on my body than I would like to admit. Uh, this last weekend, Miss Coach and I had a conversation about this, and I'm still stubborn about it. But I'm having some serious, serious um, problems with my back that I am actually concerned about. And Miss Coach is like, well, you've got to slow down. You can't do it all. You can't do it at hyper speed. Well, I know, but it's going to be damn hard for me to slow down. But when I began to really start taking a look at where I wanted to be in my life, one, did I want to live a long and productive life? Yes, I did. Do I want to be able to be around for years to come so that if my kids, who are now adults, decide to have kids, I can see my grandkids? Which I have one right now. Yes. Would I like to watch my kids now as adults become successful adults and see what they do with their life? Yeah, I would. And I, be, I realize that in order to do this, in order to be able to do it in the way that I wanted to, first of all, I owed myself, and second of all, I owed my family that opportunity. And in order to have that opportunity, I knew that I had to begin to take a look at how I was treating my body. And, and I'm not perfect at this by no means. And if, again, if you're sitting here thinking, all right, here comes the diet conversation. Coach is going to tell us to diet. Coach is going to get into I mean, I have, there is a very good friend of mine. He has been on here before. Um, he has done live uh, episodes with me before. His name is, uh, goes by Rick Shady also known as uh, Coach Shady. Uh, he and I have known each other, man, for years. Really, really good guy. And I will tell you, this man, his physique is absolutely magnificent. He does an amazing job. He does a, because puts a lot in to his physique. It's not for me. Um, this man knows more about... Oh, man, I don't even know how to what to even say, but the molecular structure of your food, without being probably a doctor in food, um, this guy loses me most of the time when he starts talking about all the breakdown and how this does this and this does that and how this. I I honestly, because I'm not a bodybuilder, because I am not a world-class athlete, I I don't care. And we don't get into that here at Grit. And I'm, and I'm not knocking my brother at all because he has, again, he has a group that listens to him, follows him, that he does this for as well as for himself. And it pays off. But for me, I don't have the time for all that, nor do I want that. I want the basics. This is basic training. And that's where when I first started taking a look at my health, what I ate, how I ate, the things that I was doing right, the things I was doing wrong, I really was nervous because I personally did not want to diet. I personally didn't want to change much. But I also knew that it was going to be habit changing. A lot of it was going to be me, again, that mental piece, me breaking through those barriers of excuses 
when it comes to my thought patterns on a how I perceived myself because I will tell you that the more that you get into different areas no matter what it is you could end up having this false image of yourself or this false desire of what you should look like compared to the group of people you're hanging around. I'm going to give an example. There are a lot of people, and I have to fight this often myself, that when they do start going to the gym, they start seeing people who are built, they're these model Greek gods, right? And they're like, man, I've put so much work into it. And I, I wish I can't be like that. Well, no, you can't. Because one, you can't be like that because you're not them. Second of all, you don't know the story behind why they look like that. And I say that because in my younger years, I would say mid-20s, I was going to a gym that, man, I was going on a regular basis, and I was going every single time, and the same time, every single time, and there was this, these guys that were going the same time I was, so in essence, we were working out the same amount, I was watching these guys just get massive, and I was getting really upset, I was getting disappointed. I was like, I don't understand. Why am I not getting big like those guys? Now, first of all, I need you to understand that there is a several other questions that should have been being asked before I got to that question. We're going to be talking about this this week. But let's break just that piece down for a second. One, was that my goal? To get as big as them? If that was my goal to get big like them. Why? Sound familiar? We talked about these questions last week. Why? Why would I want to look like him? And I'm, and I'm saying that not in a sarcastic or negative way. But if I am going to try to achieve something, the first question I need to be asking is, why? Well, honestly, now that I look back at it, the only reason I wanted to look like him was because it's what I was surrounded with at the gym. I thought that's what was healthy. I didn't know anything about that guy's diet. I didn't know anything about that guy's lifestyle. I saw an image and took it in and made it my own and said, that's what I need to look like. For no other reason than surface level imagery. It wasn't because that's healthy. It wasn't because I foresee myself at making a career out of bodybuilding. It wasn't because of I am going to be an elite warrior athlete and I need to look like that. There was no other reason other than I saw it and my mind told me that's what I'm supposed to look like. That's what I should achieve. I didn't know the reason why. There wasn't really any reason why. We'll get into that later this week. But what I want you to understand is when you don't know the backstory, there's a lot to it. And what I found out later because I actually finally went up to one of these guys and I said, man, I don't get it. I said, I, I come up to this gym every single day and I'm at this gym the same amount of time as you are. And I've watched you blow up like, dude, you're massive. What am I not doing? Well, I found out very quickly what I was not doing and that would be I am not doing steroids. Because after talking with him, and he said, well, he's like, you know, it 
took me over to the side. He's like, hey, I got this buddy that, and quickly I began to realize that he was about to try to sell me steroids. And I wasn't gonna do that. And I realized, wow, never judge his book by its cover. And I don't mean that t toward the, against the guy. What I mean is, I thought I was doing everything the same, but I wasn't. I was just taking the outward look on it. When I talk about building your body, I am talking about understanding that we get one body. How sad would it be that we miss out on opportunities because we have chosen to make excuses on, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna work out. You've heard me talk about it before. Some people say, well, I don't work out because I can't afford a gym. I don't work out because I can't, uh, I don't have time. I don't work out because I don't like going to the gym. I don't work out, ah, uh, because coach keeps talking. See, I knew coach was going to talk about working out. I don't work out, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to get buff. I don't want to get big. When I'm talking about working out, I am talking about having a healthy lifestyle. I'm talking about being, having a routine that gets your joints moving, your muscles working. And, in hand, and working alongside of that with healthy eating, healthy living. And I hear the same excuses when it comes to eating healthy. Well, it's not easy. Well, I don't have time. It's more, it's more expensive to eat healthier than it is to eat I'm not healthy. I'm on food stamps. Um, I get government assistance. I... All I, 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 all of these excuses. But I want to ask you do you know those to be true because you've experienced it? Or do you know it, do you believe it to be true because it is what you have heard other people? people say and you've taken it in as truth just like me looking at that guy at the gym and thinking I'm doing everything he's doing I took it and made it my truth but when I began to research it I found out what I thought was true was just me seeing something on the surface and accepting it as truth. Now, getting ready for this week. This is the introduction day. You very well could be saying, well, coach, I already have health issues. So really, I don't even need this week. Like, I'll just skip to the soul week. I had the mind week. I'll skip to the soul week. Coach, I'm already overweight. Coach, I already, I'm already struggling with diabetes. Coach, I'm already having... Um, sleep apnea. Coach, I already have I I don't know. I've got interlocking continental congressional heart flip-flop ingrown toe disease. I, I don't know what it is that you may have but I need you to understand that wherever you are you still can make a difference in how you treat your body. Don't accept diabetes. Don't accept being overweight. Don't accept whatever it is as being the end all. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not sitting here saying, well, coach is saying to stop treating stop taking any medication and I'm not saying that no coach is saying his plan will cure diabetes that's not what I said I didn't say that don't go around saying I said that what I said was in where you are is where you are but that is not an excuse to accept not taking care of yourself 
there are there are military members who have lost arms and legs they still take care of themselves there are there are individuals out there who my dad being one my dad is 72 now I believe it is just had a birthday and my dad has fought cancer twice and and I'm going to be using his and him as an example this week on why it is important. Living a healthy lifestyle will not always keep you from getting some disease or some type of life-altering injury. But it can for sure help in any situation. Because my father, who's fought cancer now twice, both times has been told by a doctor, my God, this would have been so much worse if you weren't where you were health-wise. If you hadn't taken care of yourself. My dad's 72 years old, and he has a better health system, I would say, than I do at almost 50. He's my inspiration. He's the one that really has taught me that it's not about the the build up your body, pump you up here like Arnold. It is all about how are you going to treat your body? How are you going to health wise? What are you going to do? What are you going to eat? And I'm going to tell you that it is not that difficult once you break the habit because the reason that many people are struggling right now with the way that they eat is because it is how they have built their habit. I grew up in the South. I grew up in the South. We love. There's a reason that's called soul food. Grease and butter. Fried chicken. And country fried steak. Ham. Biscuits and gravy. Man, I'm getting hungry all right now. We love these things. And when I think about living healthy, so many times I'm sitting there thinking that eating healthy, it's going to be a way that I'm not going to be able to have those things. I love Mountain Dew. Absolutely love Mountain Dew. Man, does that mean I can't have Mountain Dew? When we go through this week, it is, is teaching you, first of all, a mental... I, I said, Coach, I thought we are doing the body this week. We are. It goes hand in hand. It is going to be teaching you how to mentally win the war on your way that you eat and how you handle your body. Because that is where it starts. If you do not understand that, then you will not win the war. You will not win the battle. You will not get to a point where you're healthy when it comes to eating and keeping your fitness levels where they need to be. Because I will tell you that I still drink Mountain Dew. I don't drink as much as I used to, but I still drink it. I still eat sweets, but what I've learned is how do I treat it with my mind and what am I okay with, and what are my goals, what is my why, and being at 48 years old, being able to still wrestle with my adult son who always tries to tell me that when he's starting to get beat, he backs off, Dad, I want to hurt you back. Which there's some truth to that. But being able to just be able to do that with it. Being able to hike with my family. Being able 
to understand that I am doing what I can to extend my life on this earth. One, for myself. Two, for my family. And three, to be able to continue driving the purpose that I have. See, if you don't know that you have a purpose, it goes back to that mental piece. If you don't understand your purpose, going back to that mental piece, then why would I not just destroy my body? Why would I care what I put in? You see, the reason so many spend their days indulging in food or their weekend their weekends indulging in alcohol and um, partying is because their mind and their soul are not connected. They don't know why they're here or their purpose or the reason. And because of that, they destroy their body. And how sad it is the individual that finally gets their mind all of a sudden they they catch on. They're like, oh my God, I do have purpose. And they've already destroyed their body. That person still has purpose. But it is also a very sad reality when they realize that they spent so many years destroying their body And they've shortened their lifespan on this earth because of it. So no, I'm not talking about going and getting pumped up like Arnold this week. This week, what we are going to be doing is focusing on self-image. The view that we have of ourselves. Is it a healthy image? Is it a destructive image? And if it's healthy, is that healthy image reflected in our actions? Because remember last week we talked about thought patterns turning into a mindset which turns into action that action is how are we taking care of our body if it's a negative self-image then I want to show you how that is also taking thought patterns into a mindset into action and how most likely you are destroying your body because of your negative self-image that you have about who you are and how you look and your body and you as a person. Then this week, I hope, my plan is to also, is to give you some demonstrations or at least talk you through some ways to eat healthy when and how to prepare food in a healthy way that is flavorful, you still get to have, you still get to eat what pretty much what you want to eat, and how to even prepare your food for like, if you work all the time, taking your food home with you, or taking your food to work with you. These are things that are not that difficult. And it's not that expensive. I've done this for years, and it, I will tell you, inflation is very evident. Because one of the one of the uh, illustrations I used to use during um, this portion of this workshop is I would say I'd hold up this this tuna package that was I think from Bumblebee Tuna and had a um, flavor like ranch or buffalo sauce flavoring or whatever. And I'd say, look at this package. This is this has high protein in it. It is has the omega-3s in it. This is going to be really good for you. This is a healthy option. You can mix it or just put it on bread or just read it, eat it out of the package. It's not expensive. And at the time, I want to say it was maybe even like 70 cents a pack. And now years later, it's a little, a little over a dollar. Still not expensive when you think about all the things that people spend their money on to eat. When you put the whole meal together, not that expensive. But 
it is funny to think about how eight years ago when I was when I first did this workshop and I brought that package and talked about it it was less than a dollar now it's over a dollar so folks today what I want you to do is you're going to return back when it comes to the body portion you're going to return back to last Monday last Monday we did a two-minute sit-ups two-minute push-ups two-minute squats how many can you could you do I want you to redo that see if you've gotten better at it for the soul portion of this I want you to really ask yourself am I living healthy this is where the rubber begins to meet the road. How honest are you going to be with yourself? Am I living healthy? Am I, leaving, am I living with a healthy body image of what I see myself as? Am I living healthy in how I maintain my fitness, my mobility? Am I living healthy on how the fuel I put in my body? And what are my excuses, if not? I know, I believe, and I know from experience that there will be a lot of people that will not do this, this week's portion of the workshop. It's easy, it's easy to listen about how motivated your mind should be, how you should take control of your mind, that's easy because it doesn't require a lot of outside action, right? I could sit here all day and tell you, oh yeah, listen, let's think about from coach saying motivate my mind and I, I'm doing that, I'm working on it, I'm changing my thought patterns, which, which in turn uh, changes my mindset, coach says, and soon you're gonna see the actions change. See, that's easy because that's more of an internal thing. Yes, eventually it comes out in actions. But when we start talking about eating healthier and stop using excuses not to work on your mobility. When I say mobility, that's what I mean by your fitness. Like, like being able to actually extend your lifestyle, your lifetime on this earth and your mobility on this earth. Your own body image on how you, re how you view yourself. I didn't say how magazines viewed it. I didn't say how... Even your significant other views you. How you view you. Those are all harder things to hide if you're not working on it. And so, yes, so many times people don't do this week. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because... I have I have watched people Sorry, I'm yawning. I have watched people who have known about my workshops, participated in my workshops. They do the mind portion, they do the soul portion, and when it comes to the body portion, they just, they don't change their lifestyle. And then I watch their social media post as they start talking about all the health issues they're now starting to have, and how the doctor is saying that they've got to change this and change that, and I'm like, and I was telling you that five years ago, but you didn't want to listen. And again, I'm not a doctor, and I, again, am not one who, who would ever tell and have never told anyone, get off your medications, you don't need those. Nope, not a doctor, I don't have the authority to do that, nor the wisdom and the knowledge to do that. But what I will tell you is, one of the very first people to ever do great, great workshops, she, um, still, still a great member, she's doing her own thing now. Uh, still part of the workshop, or still part of the 
the Grit Nation, the Grit Nation family. But when she first started, she was extremely overweight, and, and you're like, Coach, that's not, that's not right to say. That's improper. I'm not saying nothing she wouldn't tell you. She was extremely overweight. She was smoking, I don't know how many packs of cigarettes a day. She was on all kinds of medication, heavy medication. She was suicidal, ready to give up. And one of the very first workshops she ever did was the basic training workshop. And she'll tell you, she's like, it was really my last resort, to be honest. She was, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere, but she was like, heck yeah, what do I have to lose? So she put it into play. I'll tell you what, this lady has lost her her vision and her self-image. She It has grown. She's lost a lot of weight. She's so much healthier now. She is so much happier. She's thrown away. She's off all her medication. She's no longer smoking. And I'm not saying that if you follow everything, I'm not saying that that's what this workshop will do. But what if it does? What if it takes you off one? What if it, maybe it won't take you off your medication, but what if it does extend your life? I just, keep yawning. In full transparency, I mean, I'm not, I still struggle with many things when it comes to health. I struggle with things when it comes to doing things healthy. It's it's what we're going to be learning this week is it really is. You have to own it. I drink Mountain Dew because and I know it's not good for me. But I don't make excuses for it. I acknowledge it's not good for me. I have cut back on it. I have at one time years ago stopped drinking it. But I will tell you that when you begin to understand the view of your health from a different perspective other than the men's health magazines, women's health magazines, flex, pump you up, let's go to the gym, you know, when you begin to understand it as a simplistic lifestyle that will help extend your time on this planet in a way that and I say that as I believe that when it is your time it's your time so you could clearly say well coach you won't extend my time my time's my time but my point of it is is would you rather do what you could to make the time on this earth one that is able to be enjoyed and lived to its fullest for longer and it really starts with taking care of yourself appreciate each and every one of you the reason I, I'm kind of solemn right now is because I, I just opened up a whole can of memories in my head of the people that I have tried to help and that I've known that has they've either passed away or their health is in shambles because they just didn't want to change and that's 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 fine that's on them it saddens me And I'm also thinking back about all the times where I mistreated my body. And I'm wondering what I've, what repercussions I will have. Can't change the past, but I can instill in myself today, right here, right now, that will strive to do what I can 
to do better at taking care of my body. Your response is your responsibility. Go Grinning.